I want to talk a little bit. We talked a lot about sound, voice, song, uh, that emanation. Um, but again, we live in a very visual world where it's image, 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 image. Yes, I'm, I'm a very visual director, but I'm not visual in the sense that I don't choose images as much as people think. The, m the most visual medium for me is the radio. There's nothing more visual than when you're sitting in a car and the radio's playing. So I'm visual in that sense. That I think you have to trigger images in the audience's, the spectator's mind. They have to see stuff. So sometimes you need a sound to trigger that image, sometimes you need a word, sometimes you need another image, you need an object, you need a movement, you need a gesture. That's the, the beautiful poetics of theater. It's just a bunch of ways of triggering images that right. come with emotional... So a lot of people often after my show say, I love that thing, I say, that wasn't in there. that's not in the show. And then you understand that, oh, they were, well, a bit like when you were, you were discussing about the uh, uh, the exit scene in, in Seven Streams where the, uh, there's an assisted suicide yeah. uh, scene and people hear dialogue but there's no dialogue so that's what I mean is that you can you, you can it's what goes on in the, you can't control what people will see you can never control that what people will feel what people will think you can't control that but you can trigger thought you can trigger feelings you can trigger do you have specific things that you want to trigger in people? Like, I want them to feel something like this in this scene, no, I, I, exit no, scene. No, that's the thing. And often, that's why I, I had this big conflict when I started writing collectively, because uh, people say, well, what is it that you want to say? And I always had a complex. I thought that a good writer knew what he had to say, because I thought, like others do, that a writer is a leader. Mm -hmm. He knows what it's about. He's always right, because he knows what he's talking about. When I think most interesting artists don't. Picasso said, you know, you, an artist finds stuff and then he goes looking after them. And that, I believe in that. I believe that you do this thing because it feels right, because your intuition says it's right and it's interesting, and, it, and then you learn what it's about and you learn what you're about. You, I don't have the pretension of knowing what I'm about at the, at the beginning. So you when have you have a vague idea of where you're going, of course, you know, it's not, it's, but it's almost like Christopher Columbus. You know there's a continent, you have the vaguest idea what it looks like. Right. Or if it's populated, or if there's monsters, or if it's going to be nice weather. But you know there's a continent. You feel that. Your, your gut feeling is that there's a continent. Follow me, there's a continent. Right. And you have to do the egg trick once in a while. <laughs> but uh, still, you know, you, 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 you're you confident there's something there. But you don't have the vaguest idea. You can't describe it. The other thing I, I do want to point out we can talk about is your respect for the audience. Mm -hmm. Because again, the world is going this way and you go that way in that respect for the audience is disappearing mm -hmm. and they're being trained to be consumers. So yeah. I consume a product, I consume a television program, I consume because I want to deliver the audience to the advertisers. So you stop being an individual and you start being someone to consume so I can make money. You've gone the other way where you open it and they're allowed to not only sit through the long form, but they're allowed to comment afterward and you listen to that comment. Well, I think that, okay, let's say I compare it to, to, to the big gym uh, uh, fitness center trend that we've seen flourishing the past 20 years. That comes from the fact that people now are not using their bodies anymore, right? We've, our works asks of us to sit in front of computers. And so, but our body is built to run, to uh, have muscular stresses and releases and relax and circulation our bodies are so at the end of the day a lot of people feel that they have to go to a gym to let that out to have that happen to their body right it's not just say oh I have to, I'm gonna be healthy if I it's it's a natural intuition that people have that you know my body's not being used for what it is because of the job I have it's the same thing with your brain with your imagination people work nine to five in jobs where this much of their brains being used or this much, but still, it's always the same part. And they have all this other thing about them, about what they think, their opinions, their, their feelings, their memories, their nostalgia, their creativity. All that's not being solicited. So they want that to, to go through fitness gym. They want that to circulate. So that's what 
But really, Robert? Because they go home and watch the television. No, the television tells they're... them what to think, what to feel, when to get excited, when to cry. Next program. They go to the movies. The movies tell them with the music when to be sad, when to be happy, when to be excited. Yeah. They go to events. They very rarely Absolutely. go to the events that we yeah. treasure. But they are very excited when they go to an event that asks them to be on the edge of their seat and to find the answers. It has to be good. It has to be a good show. It has to be entertaining. It has to be compelling. But they love something where things are not masticated for them. They like going to a restaurant. You have so much faith in the system. I, I can't get over it. But I'm not saying that that's what they think. The audience is not, uh, the audience will not go, oh, I think that I should go to this kind of theater. It will make my break. They don't think that way. That's our job to bring them to better entertainment. That's our job to believe in their intelligence and to stop promoting uh, theater or entertainment in general. Uh, uh, cultural outings uh, as come and see us you will not think come and see us you will forget <laughs> your life no they they have pro they want to deal with their lives in a different way they have problems but what, 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 can what, I go and get <coughs> that can help me out that make me more creative no the more. artistic director says my audience come to the theater to forget their lives they want to be entertained don't give me that heavy yeah, stuff that's, yeah, that's what the artistic directors and, and the publicists and the people think but the audience doesn't think that way. It's, it's not, it's not a, you know, there's, there's a, an important theater critic in Montreal who once said, you, we should never overestimate the audience's culture and education, but we should never underestimate their intelligence. You know, and that's true, and I always try to remind myself of that when we do a show and you go, well, people don't have the references to understand this, they don't have the culture, yeah. they don't have the education to understand it, so we shouldn't spend too much time laying out all the references, but they're intelligent, they have, they have their own references, how do you tap into that? And how do you trigger, how do you, how do you create the sounds, the image, the words, to, to trigger in their own images, their own ideas, and they'll, they'll make sense of it, they're intelligent. I want you to talk a bit about body, for, because we've only got five minutes left. You work with acrobats, you work with dancers, you work with actors, and you yourself just did a dance piece yeah. with uh, two dancers. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I danced on film with the Czech National Ballet, and I am deeply embarrassed at what I did. And no one has ever, ever seen it, and so I'm very happy about that. But now that I know it exists... <laughs> no, no, I'll never tell you where. YouTube. <laughs> no, no, no. So, yeah. you you started as an actor? Yeah, I started as an actor. And you have kept your acting instinct going all this time, and now you will you will dance as well. It, it, I, I started dancing uh, for the same reasons I started doing opera, in the sense that theater should be sung and danced, like it used to. I mean, uh, uh, Peter, Brook, Peter Brook was commenting that, you know, when he went in, uh, in Africa, many places, small villages and all that, and they say, well, we're going to do a piece of theater for you. And they say, what's theater? They only have a word for dance, because theater and dance is all the same thing. And, and there's a lot of extraordinary artists, and the late Pino Bausch is one of them, who blurred the, 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 bound, the boundaries between dance and theater. It's the same thing. That In the theater, this is not just a naturalistic way of moving and speaking. The actor should, his body should be able to be he should, 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 should be allowed to, to dance, uh, whatever that is, and sing his text, his part. And what was that like for you to dance with these dancers? Well, it was very difficult because there's a, 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 a discipline that I think dancers have that's compulsory. I think we, we get away with murder in theater. I'm not saying we're lazy, but I think that, you know, we have this kind of, if you have a bit of experience and you're a good actor, you, you know, have these tricks and I'll do this. Pull the tricks. Yeah, you pull the tricks and it's fine. You could get, get away with it. In dance, you really have to train. You have to sweat. You have to... You, you, nothing's easy. And and you're, you're dealing with a second level of... Because it's very abstract. Whatever you do, even in classical dance, it's an abstraction of reality, of realistic movement. So how do you convey your story through that with no words, with... with uh, and what we did is a meeting point of theater and dance. So there is, there are a bit of words, but uh, uh, you know, CBGM is a you know, the great international diva. She's just this amazing star dancer who 
is still very curious on what she can do on the stage as a, as a communicator, as a storyteller, using her body, but mm -hmm. moving towards theater, moving towards words. And Russell Malefant, who's a great uh, contemporary choreographer, who's also preoccupied by how do how how do we go from abstraction, physical abstraction that is closer to music than it is to to a right. literary theater. So, so it's a moment of exchange. It's a moment of and and I it I had to put myself through a lot of pain to do this, and, and I started to dance at age fifty. Plié, jeté. Well, not. That kind of thing. But, Rassemble. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, but, you know, uh, and, and the, the, the meeting point for all of us was uh, martial arts because it was, what we do ah. is, is very influenced by, um, at least the themes were influenced by, by Japanese. But the thing is that martial arts, the martial arts we studied for this is very close to uh, the Peking opera way of moving martial arts and, and, and uh, Chinese dance and theater are very, very connected to, to martial arts. So all of these gestures and these uh, right. are all uh, our, our vocabulary, our next, uh, theatrical vocabulary. So that was a good place for us to meet because they had never done martial arts and neither did I. So we, we, we right. met on that, that ground first and then we moved into theater. And then 